the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear friends in jesus christ we shall meditate upon the word of god so that we may be enlightened so that we may get more wisdom of god rather than the knowledge of the world when i meditated and reflected on the passage written by saint john one sentence touched me a lot that is john 138 and 39 we shall listen it from the gospel then we shall proceed the two disciples heard him say this and went with jesus Jesus turned saw them following him and asked what are you looking for they answered where do you live rabbi this word means teacher come and see he answered this is the word of the lord my dear friends in jesus christ this passage is very short very small and the words which are written in the gospel is very very powerful and important for example jesus turned back to the disciples who were following him and said only one sentence come and see First of all, he asked, "What are you searching for?" Because with the great curiosity and anxiety, they were following him. It was not uh, five or ten people; it was a big crowd. Seeing the crowd, he turned back and asked, "What are you searching for?" Jesus said, "Come and see." Twenty years back. when i saw a big crowd was moving towards pota ashram divine before starting divine retreat center i also was traveling in the bus i got down there and uh, entered in the campus when i searched a chair i did not get it get it at all because more than 1 lakh of people were there i listened quietly from 10:30 till till 3 o'clock then again it started after half an hour i did not take lunch i did not drink anything at all in the second session when i was looking forward i saw my eldest brother also was standing there it was amazing and surprising i was really happy till 5 o'clock both of us stood there without uh, sitting hours and hours why it was because of the power and the attraction towards the word of god in old testament book of wisdom chapter 6 verse 11 there is a message for us set your desires on my word you shall be instructed our desire is on the worldly things material things desire is for a good computer latest computer or whatsapp or some other latest mechanized machines to get more knowledge and information about the world what is happening all over the world within seconds you can calculate it you can get it that message but that message is simply worldly material that won't satisfy you because each man is assigned for eternity 
not for this world. Book of Wisdom, chapter 2, verse 23, there it is written, man is assigned for eternity. If you are aware of that, definitely every moment of your life, you will search the face of Jesus Christ. You will search the instructions of the Holy Spirit, which is coming from heaven. Why don't you take time for that? Why don't you search the face of Jesus Christ? This is what King David wrote in the Psalm. Psalm 27 verse 8. Search my face. Seek my face. What's the difference between the face of an ordinary man and the face of Jesus Christ? The face of Jesus Christ is heavenly. It is a beautiful face because of the wisdom of God, because of the grace of God, because Jesus is the image of the Father in heaven. Exactly the likeness of the Father we can see in the face of Jesus Christ. Why don't you look at him, meditate upon him, think about him and enjoy his presence? Especially when you are sitting in front of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus said, to get this experience, wonderful experience, Jesus said, come and see. Where do you stay? They might have expected from Jesus Christ some explanations about his stay. What are the specialties of the stay? Specialties of the stay means how Jesus is eating, how Jesus is eating with his hand, what are the items he is taking, consuming, how much water he drinks, especially in the uh, summer season. All these details and they are searching. Then they can spread this news. Everything, whatever he does, it is a hot news for the people. Simply a hot news for the people. Jesus said more than that, Jesus said, come and see. Seeing Jesus, his behavior, his conversation, and his powerful word, and the presence, the very presence itself was wonderful. Should become a exciting, enlightening experience. I used to sit in front of Jesus Christ after breakfast when there is no retreat outside. I start the prayer to Jesus Christ. I start the presence of enjoying the presence of Jesus Christ from 8.30 till 9.30. Then I kneel down before Jesus Christ when there is no much people. I kneel down and tell Jesus, bless me, O Lord, by laying your hands upon my head. When I was not enjoying the touch of Jesus Christ, again I will beg before Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, give me a little touch. Then sometimes I feel the fingers of Jesus Christ moving around my head. That inspires me, enlightens me, and it gives me a thrill, great thrill. I have enjoyed his presence many, many hours. By sitting, enjoying his presence, seeing Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, silent presence of Jesus Christ, miraculous presence of Jesus Christ, I enjoyed his presence and I have received lots of blessings from Jesus Christ. For example, if people are asking prayer for healing, prayer for getting a job, prayer for the uh, marital relationship. When I pray for one hour, within two hours, I get a message. Father, what we have asked you, a message, a blessing from Jesus Christ, we got it. My son got a job in Kuwait. My daughter is getting ready for marriage within 
uh, two weeks. So I was really thrilled. Why? I enjoyed the presence and I prayed for others. Then people are happy. While you sit in front of Jesus Christ, don't simply sit. Don't sit for relaxation. You can relax mentally, emotionally, psychologically and physically. All our senses must be calmed down. Be calm. In the psalm it is written very clearly, Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still. Stillness of the body that gives you a sleepy mood. Stillness of the body and stillness of the mind. Stillness of the imagination. Stillness of the intellect. These are the four faculties we have for a person. These faculties must be quietened, stilled. That's why King David wrote, Be still and know that I am God. This is what Jesus said in another word, Come and see. When you come before the Master, Divine Master, you must have the feeling Good experience, wonderful experience, a spiritual experience, an enlightening experience. That is very, very important. Very, very important for beginning a deep variety of prayer. If you want to deepen your prayer experience, you have to be still and know that God is the Almighty. When you re receive a special enlightenment, you will have a freedom of the mind, inner freedom of the mind. This is what Jesus said, John chapter 8, 39. Jesus said, you will come to know the truth, truth will set you free. You will come to know the truth, what do you mean by that? Knowing the Almighty, knowing the Son of God through prayer, because God is spirit, we can't see with our face, we, with our eyes, we can experience Jesus Christ. We can't touch the air, we can't carry one kilo air to another place. But air is a reality, it is present everywhere. But you cannot carry it in a basket or a bag, but you can experience. The same way, God is spirit, you will be able to uh, experience him through the Holy Eucharist, through the Holy Mass, through the sacraments, you must be able to experience him. This is what Jesus said to the people, come and see. When they stayed with the Jesus Christ, they were thrilled and very, very happy. When I was making my annual retreat in 1979, that retreat was conducted by Rufus Pereira from Bombay, I was asking God, the first days I was asking, where is the love of God? In the first John chapter 4, verse 4 onwards, there it is written many times, God is love. Where is that love? I have not experienced it because I lost my beloved father when I was two years old. I haven't seen his voice, seen his face. I haven't seen his photograph. Nothing. Therefore, there is a vacuum within my heart. That vacuum must be filled with the power of Jesus Christ, the presence of Jesus Christ, with the touch of Jesus Christ. For that, I was thirst. I was thirsty. I was begging before God, Oh God, if you are really a loving father, do let me see your glory. In Exodus chapter 10, 33, there it is written, Oh God, give me a glimpse of your glory. This was the prayer of Moses. But God allowed him to see partially the face of God. Moses was very happy. Abraham was very, very happy. 
Moses never complained about the love of God later. In the same way, when we attend the Mass, when we receive the sacraments, we must be able to experience the presence of Jesus Christ and the thrill of Jesus Christ. I have got these experiences when I was a young priest. I was really thirsty, but later, after praying more than five years, I got all the experiences, all the wonderful experiences, and God made use of me as an instrument in his hand. In our day-to-day -day life, we must uh, become the fragrance of Jesus Christ. To become a fragrance of Jesus Christ, we need to experience him. What is the experience? If somebody is asking, have you seen God? Yes, I have seen God. I have experienced God. Could you experience his presence for a long time? Yes, I have experienced his presence for two days or one day. This is very, very essential for our spiritual growth. Otherwise, you may feel a kind of uh, emptiness within your heart. You attended the Mass, received the Holy Sacraments, finished. No, no. That uh, touch of Jesus Christ, the whisperings of Jesus Christ, or the whisperings of the Holy Spirit, you must feel it in every moment of our life. Then you will be able to give uh, enlightenment for others. People will be thrilled and uh, very happy when you speak to others because you are sharing the fragrance of Jesus Christ to others. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15 and 16, St. Paul said, you should become the fragrance of Jesus Christ. What is the fragrance of Jesus Christ? The qualities of God or the fruits of the Holy Spirit we are spreading in our day-to-day -day life. For this, we have to do penances, self-control, forgiveness to our enemies, and knowing the word of God. Daily, at least one sentence, read the powerful word of God and keep it in your mind. That will be a spiritual food for you. That will be a spiritual instruction for you. Once I was reading the Bible keenly, the, especially the Old Testament, Boko Tobit. Later, suddenly one sentence touched me. That is Boko Tobit chapter 4, verse 6. That is about uh, tithe giving, sharing whatever we have to others, the poor people. I shared it, that sentence, in the evening to a young man. He was very happy, extremely happy. And then he opened the Bible and he read it, the whole passage. In the same way, if you know the word of God, if you know the power of the word of God, that will enlighten others, that will be a nourishment for you also, a daily food for you, spiritual food. Without spiritual food, if you fill up your stomach, you feel a kind of emptiness, Loneliness. Why? Whatever we have consumed materially, it, it is digested and gone away. But if you receive the Spirit of God in different model, in different way, that will enlighten you, that will stay within your soul, within your body, within your personality. Later, you will be transformed you will be transfigurated. This is the effect. So, as you descend from Jesus Christ, come and see. Are you ready to come every day to Jesus Christ in front of the Holy Eucharist? During the prayer, daily prayer, evening prayer, morning prayer, are you interested? Only spend minimum three minutes or five minutes or maximum 15 minutes. Why can't you spare that time? 
to see Jesus Christ and experience Jesus Christ, how Jesus speaks, to know how Jesus speaks, you have to take the Bible, open it and read keenly, meditatively, then keep it one sentence in your heart and meditate over that. That will help you for your uh, spiritual growth. When you receive the word of God, you will grow slowly, unknowingly, you will be growing spiritually. You will be maturing spiritually. So, when you receive the word of God from Jesus Christ, you have to go to Jesus Christ, you have to depend on the word of God. Slowly, you can experience the differences, changes taken place within your personality. People also will comment about that. So, let us try to practice this way of uh, spiritual life, coming to Jesus Christ, for example, in the church, for example, in front of the crucifix, for example, for the family prayer or morning prayer, evening prayer. Just uh, being with Jesus Christ, just being with the power of God, the word of God, you will be able to grow spiritually. You will never be tempted. You will have temptation, but you, can, you will be able to conquer, you can subdue the satanic forces in our day-to-day -day life. Therefore, let us pray to Jesus Christ so that we may have a great attraction towards Jesus Christ. Our focus is on the worldly matters. Our attention is gone away from God. That's why we are spending little time to come and see Jesus Christ. Three times a day, I go to the Holy, uh, in front of the Holy Eucharist and sit there morning, afternoon and in the evening. That's a great enjoyment for me. I will never be uh, disturbed. I am so much happy about that. Therefore, let us try to see and enjoy the presence of Jesus Christ and grow spiritually daily. Let us pray for a moment. Oh Lord, thank you, Jesus, for bringing your children in front of television to listen your word. What Jesus told the disciples, the same you are going to infuse upon the people who are in front of the TV. Enlighten them, strengthen them, heal them spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically so that they may have more energy to fight against to the powers of darkness so that they may become an enlightened person so that they may become a model for other Christians also. Jesus, how much you want them, whatever they do today, let them have more spiritual energy and uh, heavenly spiritual attitude and orientation so that they may also transform and uh, transfigurate in their day-to-day -day life. Blessed Mother Mary, intercede for them so that they may experience God's presence in their day-to-day -day work. Make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.